afternoon. We're in the car again. Yes, we are. Uh, my name is Chris McKay. I'm the collections manager at the Marion Museum of History, and this is my Tombstone Tourism Tour 2021 partner in history crime. Well, there is no crime in this one, though, I don't think. Oh, yeah, there is. Oh, there is one. That's right. All Possibly. Right. But your name is? Possibly. I'm Amy Reed, curator at the History Museum, and we are on the road again. We are. In the car, about to go on the road. We are, I'm excited, because you're gonna finally, we're gonna go into my neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. I, I do know where this cemetery is at that we're going to, but you really have not ventured over there. I. Well, I definitely haven't been to the cemetery. I do occasionally drive in that area. Like, that's not so far East Cobb to me that it feels like, a foreign South country. Carolina, yeah. Like I feel like I'm still in Cobb County. You're still in Cobb this County. This area. Yeah. So where are we going today? We are going to the Pat. No, no. Sandy. <laughs> this is a no, no. It's okay because this one was confusing. Sandy so, Plains Cemetery is what Sarah Temple says. Sarah Temple calls it that. There was there is an old Sandy Plains Cemetery, and then there is Sandy Plains. Baptist Cemetery. So mm -hmm. that's very confusing. Mm -hmm. A lot of different things. We have not gone um, to the old one because it's more on private property. So that's going to take us a minute. And then the Sandy Plains Baptist Cemetery, she does not go to because it wasn't in existence oh, when yeah. she wrote this right. book. It came right. around in the 1940s. So this okay. book is 19, when she's going around 1930, 1931. Mm -hmm. So her directions say, on Sandy Plains Road. Okay. Turn off Kenton Road, 3.5 miles from Marietta, and proceed 2.2 on Sandy Plains Road to Cemetery. Now, the thing that we should know Processing all that. Okay. I, this won't be hard because it pretty much is on point. Okay. Uh, what you should note, though, is if you take Kenton Road and it goes over the interstate to where you can get on the interstate, that is not the Kenton Road she means. Huh? Mm -mm. There's another one? There it is. Oh, see, I would have been confused. So, when we leave here, we are going to um, head north away from the square. And here, for reference, we're is in, in front of the museum. So, yes, we're in the parking right lot in front of the museum. Because we will always start in Marietta because that's where she starts. Yes. So, we will head north um, on Cherokee Street. And then, instead of going towards the hospital, we will take that little turn right mm -hmm. onto Canton Road, and we will take that Canton Road. Up. Right. Yes. I thought that was the same one as you were that you were just talking. No, no. About. The one if you're trying to get onto the interstate, that is also called Canton Road, and it's called a, it's a spur. But they do eventually meet. Yes. Later. They merge. Farther up. Yes. Okay. But, um, okay. But she, that part, that spur would not have existed when she traveled because there was no interstate here at that point. Correct. So I'm excited because not only are we going to check out this older cemetery that's hidden away somewhere, tucked away. It's not tucked no. away. It, it's, oh. You'll see it. Okay. It's pretty obvious. It's, well, I've never noticed it. Yeah. We'll put it that way. But also, we're going to talk about and learn about a little bit of Sandy Plains history, the community, because it was around. It's an older around. community. Yeah, it's an yeah. older community that was just a little I don't farming even call, community yeah farming. I mean would you call it a village no I don't know no. what you would call it every just, time I looked at it in the newspaper Sandy Plains community that's mm -hmm. what they called it yeah I mean this is the first one we're going to but there is within maybe a 20 minute walking radius three others yeah three other cemeteries yeah so this wasn't um, a tap I mean it's a community it's a rural farming community mm -hmm. that now, if you told somebody this was a rural farming community, oh, they'll laugh at you. It does like, not look like that at all. No, yeah. no, so, no, no, So, yeah, so we'll see where we're going. And as we are traveling along today, if you, um, if you are so inclined to support us with uh, stars, right? Yes, it's yes, stars enabled. Yes, stars sure. enabled. I want to make sure it's been a minute since we did Yes, that. but if you're watching this later on YouTube, you can go to our museum website and support us through that. Yes. Um, so you do have that option. And anybody who supported us in the past, we greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. And we hope you continue. Because uh, these, we're going to be bringing more of these road trips to the cemeteries because I think we've done maybe 1%. Oh, yeah. Maybe two. Yeah. There's a lot of cemeteries <laughs> to cover. And so we're splicing those in between the historic sites that we have all over town. So 
um, enjoy and uh, we'll be back in a bit. Yeah, let's go have fun. All right, we found it. We did. We have explored it a little bit before uh, we got going here, and this is gonna be a fun one. Are you? Is your microphone on? I'm just making sure. I think it is. Because last time I don't think it was. And it's we... on. Okay, it's good. on. And I found two treasures. I only know of one. Did you just I know. find another one? I just found another one. Well, okay. So your first treasure, if you know where this cemetery yes. is at, it's not surprising that she found this first treasure. No, not surprising because, can you flip the camera? Yes. That is Sprayberry High School truck. Um, this one was built in 1973, so or opened in 1973, I should say. But just where that fence line is, is the baseball field. So can anyone guess what my treasure was? Let's take a guess. Across the highway, we've got a big Grand Slam hitter because they got a ball. Home plate. Home plate? You found home plate. Oh, <laughs> no. No. She found it real quick, too. Like, you found and that baseball guess real guess what? Oh, I just realized this. What? Look at what earrings I'm wearing today. You are wearing baseball. It was destiny. I didn't plan that either, y'all. I did not know where we were going this morning, even though she told me multiple times. It yeah, just, you know, we, I, um, I kind of roll with the punches on the day of. Well, we decided so. you can't wear your skeleton ones, and I can't wear my Haunted Mansion hat because the cemeteries are never open when we do that. That's true. I wore my baseball earrings today, found a baseball. Brilliant. You know what else I found? But it's just fine. But it has nothing to do with anything I'm wearing, I don't think. Let's go see. Let me show you what else. Okay, because you know what? Cemeteries are fun places to explore, not just for the stories that they hold or the serene surroundings, but also sometimes you'll find things like a really big tortoise shell. Holy cow. I know. Like, what is that doing here? Well, first off, I have a feeling somebody ran him over, and that's just oh, sad. Oh, that is sad. I didn't think about that. Poor turtle. Well, let's, let's move I don't, away from the Yeah, I don't road. really know what kind of source of water is around here that he may have been living in. Well, but... if it's a tortoise, he doesn't need it. Oh, well. Tomato, tomato. I no, there is a difference. <laughs> don't let me forget uh, my cup. I'm going to leave it there. Okay. Okay. So, well, we're going, to stay we're going the, the wrong way. Oh, we're standing in the shade. Yes. Let's stay here for let's a second. Explain a few things. Okay. Explain okay, so a few let's things. Explain a few let's things. have this behind us. Look at that. There it is. So, the very busy road in front of us is Sandy Plains. Um, the intersection of Sandy Plains and Piedmont is right down the road. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to show Amy the other uh, Baptist cemetery farther up the road, but you guys won't see it because it's not a part of our lists of ones. We'll do it later, but. Um, not in this go around tour. Yeah, tour. not today. Okay, so we have a purple folder for today. I've upgraded my folder. Um, if you go and find a grave, they refer to this as Sandy Plains Baptist Cemetery, Baptist Church South. The other one's North. Yes, and my question was, did the church? No, we we had a question. I don't remember if it was my question, but who owned this property? Who was running it? The church okay. does now, but they didn't originally, mm -hmm. right? No. So, okay. So the oldest grave in here is from like the 1840s, which we'll show you later. But um, this was actually referred to by Sarah as Sandy Plains Cemetery, not Sandy Plains Baptist. Mm -hmm. um, it was deeded to the church sometime before the 1980s when the land was sold and they were going to build subdivisions. The okay. guy who bought the property uh, sold or deeded it to the church. Now, it could have been deeded to the church originally back in the day, but we've discussed this. Many times those deeds aren't found. Mm -hmm. And so, right. just being nice, he deeded it back. Right. Um, and then this became the old cemetery in the 1940s when they put in the new one, which is down the road about a mile, mile and a half. Right, right. So, but again, there are there are burials here after 1940, but that, mm -hmm. so when, when we say there was a new one built, it's not because this one was full, it's because this one was probably sold out. Sold. So it was sold out and then, so there's still newer burials. There's one, I think the newest we saw. Yeah, we 2019. Saw. So there's still people being buried out here occasionally. But, yes. um, but for the most part, it does look like the grass is being cut. But I think that as you'll see, there's still a lot of maintenance. And, you know, um, we were thinking maybe at some point, if anyone out there is watching this and maybe attends this church, that, it's you know. It's a rather large yeah. church. 
It's a rather large church. Okay, good to know. That maybe if there's a Boy Scout troop or something that is associated with the church that meets there, that maybe they could take on coming and clearing out some of the brush. You'll see in a, in a little bit. But I also specifically thought about the Boy Scouts because our first stop has it's to do Scout. with the Boy Scout. It's a Boy Scout. And let me find it. Go ahead and listen. Yeah, go ahead. Um, this is One, the first time we've seen a Boy Scout emblem on a, a on tombstone. a tombstone, and it's also representative of a lot of the graves in this cemetery that we've seen are children, unfortunately, mm -hmm. infants of and children. Many families losing multiple children at young ages, so that's always sad to see that. Um, we're going to talk about a couple of those stories um, because they're still important to remember, even though they weren't on this earth very long. They, they were able to make their mark and have a story. That's right. So, so this one is right by the road. We're going to get up close and then we'll move our way back to where it's a little bit quieter. Yep. Um, this one is not hard to find either. Nope. Here we go. Okay. Right up front here. Look at this. I'm going to get down close to it. So I this can. probably would have had a ceramic uh, picture. A porcelain, uh, por you said, right? Well, porcelain, I'm sorry. Porcelain? Right, porcelain. Porcelain picture of him. I know. I miss. I wonder where it went. It's William Ronald Wilson, born April 25th, 1941, dies August 14th, 1953. And it looks like, who's next to him? Do we it know? It looks like Mama. Mama might be next to him. She died in 1999, born in 1912. Or so her. Yeah, one of the two. yeah. Well, probably mother. Last yeah, 1912, you know, she probably had her baby in, you know, her 30s. Um, so, but yeah, if you can see that right there, that's the be prepared. Now, this marker may be newer. Do you, do you think, do you get that feeling? I kind of um, get the feeling that that emblem and that marker are possibly newer. I wouldn't say it's the same time period as the mother's 1999, but I'm wondering if it's newer versus 1953 yeah yeah, but I yeah think that's what I'm i saying. still think it's older than 1999 yeah just because um i bet you when mama died this was still here yeah probably probably you're probably right um yeah because mama wouldn't let yeah. that happen and it's an awfully big plot it is. so it looks is. like there's room for more um Let's so i don't know that way so what's we're not going on but we're gonna walk away but do you, did you happen to find out i forgot to ask you did you happen to find out his story I of did. how he died Okay, well, let's go over here. Back to the shade. All okay. Right. Tell us how. So he's 12. Okay. okay. Oh. <coughs> Writes for William Ronald Wilson of Brookhaven, mm. who lived in Marietta until recently, who was accidentally killed Friday evening in a scuffle with his twin brother over a loaded pistol. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. <coughs> the youth died almost instantly from a pin pistol wound in the heart according to the decab police officers uh, the officer reported the mother miss emma kate wilson who was the one mm -hmm. next to him had loaded the gun and laid it on the kitchen table and went into the other room to make a telephone call i won't say anything about that no she loaded the gun as a precaution against prowlers okay this then says to me that dad probably wasn't around yeah and and you said they were living in brookhaven yeah at that point okay mm -hmm. Apparently, William Ronald grabbed the pistol because he said he had heard a noise outside. When his twin, James Donald, tried to wrest it from him, the 32 caliber pistol discharged, killing the youth. So, and then it says the deceased lives, leaves his mother, who's buried here. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, father is mentioned. Mm. Father. But again, they could have been divorced or something mm -hmm. like that. One brother, the twin. One sister. Um, and then a grandmother who actually... I don't think, no, I don't think it's there, but the Bannister. grandmother's last name is Bannister. Okay, so maybe. And then, but I wonder if those two, two or three other plots that are there are maybe for the father. Yeah, possibly. Sister and brother or something like that. Yeah. Because they could still be alive if he was born in the 1940s. Well, yeah. he was born, yeah, 41. 41 that's right. That's yeah. possible. But yeah, so that's the first time we've ever seen a scout. But yeah, you know, that's, that's, that is so tragic. And, you know, you have to sit and reflect on stories like that. And not try to disassociate yourself because it happened so long ago. But, you know, I try to put myself in their shoes and think uh, how unbelievably unimaginable that mother must have felt. Mm -hmm. um, knowing that something that she did caused the death of one of her twin boys. And then also 
the brother, the twin brother who was trying to, we can assume, you know, keep his brother from doing something stupid with right. a gun and in the end ended up accidentally shooting him. And I think that that's the whole, the whole story is just horrific. It's, tra it's tragic. Uh, it's so tragic. Which unfortunately for us today in this cemetery, it's a lot of tragedy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. When we go to another plot, we will uh, discuss that. Mm -hmm. But on a lighter note, I we found one that Amy and I have never seen this. Uh, what is it? En not engraving, but um, I guess it's an engraving. Yeah, engraving. Um, the design. And then um, I noticed a mistake on it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of questions. So let's walk over yes. to one that we had a lot of questions about. And see, this is what, you know, the benefit of walking around the cemeteries before we start filming because we do our research beforehand and pull certain names but sometimes others just pop out that we weren't really didn't catch our eye on our research but they now we pop wonder out of their graves well they just pop out. <laughs> unfortunately um, the no. design work or something like that um is it just draws us in yeah so yep. wait where um, are we going around this yeah, way go around that. let me go this way thank you jesus for the for the breeze Woo. oh first check out this look at this one I mean, we have a situation, folks. I tried to get my camera down in the crack there, and I got nothing. So, if you guys should like to um, hit us up with some stars, we're going to start a fund to get Amy one of those little snake cameras that I can, like, push into holes and cracks and see what I can find. Yeah. <laughs> so, this, so, this is the McCullers, but it's... um. We think a mother and a daughter. Okay, so let me get up close. So we got uh, mini. Mini. McCuller. McCuller. You got to say it with an Irish accent. I'm not very good. Mini McCuller. I got mini McCuller and uh, Nancy McCuller. Yeah. You're going a little <laughs> so, Norwegian on that. Oh, am I Norwegian? The, yeah, oh, the yeah came out oh yeah. That's a little but, Minnesota. So you. You've got the clover here, which I've never seen that yeah, before. Yeah, it's beautiful. What else is interesting is is okay. they don't know the date, so they didn't carve it in, which I find kind of weird. Well, since she... That's her death date, you yeah, think they'd know. Yeah, and she was young, yeah. yeah. You think the mother, okay, that's her birth, they don't have the birth date. I get it, because it's 1849. Sure. All right, you ready, everybody? Here's We're ready. Here's the mistake. We're ready. November 31st. And there's quite a space between November. Like, I'm wondering if they really did, like, screw up somehow, and they, then they accidentally I put think, 31, and I don't know. No, you know what I think? I don't think this is the right size. Like, this seems smaller yeah, size than that. I wonder if they had the wrong template. Very awkward. But it... The whole thing. And so we're wondering if, as Krista states, in the year of our Lord, 1910... There was a 31st of November. <laughs> we're going to have to go back and see. Pull out the old farmer's uh, almanac. I'm going to have to look at that one. <laughs> so, either the 21st or the 30th. I would hazard a guess it was supposed to be the 21st. Sure. I would guess that. <laughs> I was just like, did something happen in 1910? Who knows? Who knows? Or, or she didn't die in November. Okay. She died in like December or October, a month that actually had a 31. Okay, then why would they put November? People make mistakes all the time. I don't know. I told but you about the one lady who they also, had her die 10 years before she actually did. Oh, yeah, that's rough. That there's also a beautiful M, M here. That, that's, yeah, that's yeah. scroll work. Yeah, I don't know that there was anything on the back side. Mm, no, <clears> there's some... Um, words on the front but yeah it needs a cleaning for me to be able to read it sure but it's a, a wide stone too yeah now see talking about some of the areas that the scouts could kind of help with maybe cutting back some of the trees and branches of places like this if you guys can look through here oh yeah i see it there's one hiding two hiding two no uh, one. no i think it's one one so you know there's a lot of of um headstones like that around here that you know could could be read much easier if we didn't have to crawl through the brush to get it. Um, like there's one, well, that one's not hiding, uh, but no, it's, it's overgrown. No, um, it's farther back. Yeah. I know what you're saying, though. All right, so now we're going to head over. There's also an awful lot of, of headstones here that are knocked over, unfortunately. Uh, where are we going? Let's start with Lloyd. Right here. Okay, here's Lloyd. Okay. All okay. right. So the Post family... Okay, we're not far from Post Oak Trit, but this uh -huh. is, this family is not Post Oak Trit because it's actually Post Oak and the family is Trit. So if somebody asks later, I'm just saying. Okay. 
So, Lloyd, um, what does it say? It's December to July 4th. All right. Yep. December 20th, 1928 to July 4th, 1956. Okay. So, he's got some I, sort of a broken stone in there, too. Yeah, Don't know what that's about. Stone. Okay. So, he's Lloyd Jr. Anton Post. Mm hmm. All right. So, in the newspaper, it says, okay, also. Wait, wouldn't he be Lloyd? Oh, his nickname's Jr. Junior. Yeah, okay, that's what. Okay. You have to wonder on certain dates if it's just ironic or irony or if if something happens. So, if it's July 4th, mm -hmm. makes me wonder, like, First thought would be fireworks today. Well, right, today, but, but not then. Not then. So on his find a grave, it says, 27-year-old Junior was on a 4th of July picnic with his girlfriend, France Norton, mm -hmm. when he, oh, and family, when he drowned at the mouth of Tanyard Creek. Which is up in Ackworth. Okay. Uh, Norton said it was an accident. However, when Junior's body was recovered, he was fully clothed, still wearing his shoes and wallet in his back pocket. Right. Junior was a hardworking man who worked in the farms around his home place. Again, this is a, a was a rural area. He was the son of Lloyd Post Sr. and Daisy Daisy Lou. I love that. Daisy Lou Kid and the oldest of eight brothers and sisters who we'll talk about in just a minute. So he's buried here, but the rest of the family is just a few feet away. Um, and then you had found it said in the paper mm -hmm. um, just the day later in 1956, 27-year-old Marietta man drowned Wednesday afternoon while wading near the mouth of Tanyard Creek in Bartow County. The body of Lloyd Anton Post, Route 6, Marietta was taken from the creek about 6.15. Two youngsters swimming in the area said the man apparently stepped into a deep hole in the branch of Alatoona Lake. Yeah, so I'm wondering if maybe that explains why he was fully clothed. Was fully clothed, and, and yeah, maybe he was just wading in for some reason, you know, up to your knees. I mean, I was wading in that same lake yesterday, as a matter of fact. You know, you do that, and yeah, like they said, yeah. just kind of hit some sort of a hole, went under. Maybe you couldn't swim. You know, maybe he's maybe re does something in the water mm -hmm. got his feet tangled. That yeah. happens frequently. So. Yeah, yeah. So that's what happened. So I, you know, after reading the. When you first read the ancestor, I mean the find a grave report, it kind of seemed like something foul might have happened. But really, after reading that newspaper article, I can almost see how maybe it was an accident. Yeah, oh, you know? I can totally. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he dies in 1956. That still leaves Daddy and Mama, right? And siblings. eight, eight, no, seven siblings. Yeah, nine, eight. It, 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 eight. Wait. Yeah, let's go over to the parents and Wait, I can explain this because it's included. Yeah, it's, it's I can confusing. This better. Yes, okay, we're going to the parents here. Watch out for that anthill, okay. please. Very carefully. A lot. Of, we're crawling over a lot yeah. of broken things here, just laying um, on the ground, all over. Let's do. Okay, okay so we have Mother Daisy. She's Daisy. the far, the farthest one. So she's and over I will here. say this: what was. Um, lovely about hers was one of the grandchildren mm -hmm. one of the granddaughters had written a really sweet note on find a grave about how much they missed her and loved her Aww. and i'm like yep i get it yeah of I course of course yeah um and so the father lloyd is in the center 1966 show that he dies in 66 asleep in jesus so this is like 10 years later they must have bought a born two plots. in 1895 there Okay. And then the one right next to it, and I'll move this, is Dion, mm -hmm. which is, he's is young. A, he's young, but it's such a great name because you don't see Dion's until like, like, like the '90s. That's what I remember the name like Dion. Dion Sanders. Yes. <laughs> but um, Dion was really young, and he actually died of cancer. Yeah. Yeah. So the oldest brother has passed away. Dion dies. In 60, um, 12 years later. No, first her husband dies. So Daisy, oh, yeah, yeah. Daisy has a son in 56. He dies of drowning. Then her husband dies in 66. Then Dion dies of cancer in 68. She had a set of twin boys, one of whom was still was a stillbirth. So, so that child died. And what year was that? Do you remember? Oh, I don't have I don't that. know if we have but, that. But yeah. that's three boys mm -hmm. that she had lost pretty quickly. I mean before yeah. reaching adulthood and right. or, or full adulthood right. or whatever. 
Um, Because as they say, you should never outlive your children. Yeah. So just behind us are a couple more children. Mm -hmm. Let's see. We'll do that one last. We're doing this one last? We'll do that one last. Okay. We'll just come right back. All right. So you have daughter... Levine, who I love that name. Levine. I, love, love it. I think it's but Levine. This one says 1982. So yeah. that's the fourth child. That dies before her. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? That's what what was her date? 85. 80, 85. Okay, yeah. So then, then Levine Levine dies first and then You have William Rex, who is another son, but he dies a few years later after. Right, Levine. right. But right here, this one that's harder to read is a grandson. So let's grandson yeah. Randy. I'm He's seven years old. Precious. Let me read the article. That one. Randy Post, seven-year-old son of Mr. and Mrs. Don B. Post, which Amy and I found out that Randy's mother was actually France Norton, who we mentioned first. She was the girlfriend of the older brother, and when he passed away... Lloyd. Um, yes. So she, she was there yeah. when Lloyd died at Tanyard Creek. He dies. They're teen, they're, she, I think he was 18. She was probably around the same age. Then she ends up di- uh, marrying Lloyd's brother. Who? Uh, which brother was Don, it? Don. Don. was not very good. And then Don and, what's her name? Nancy? France. France. That's right, France. Don and France have a son that we're standing in front of, Randy Jean Post. Okay. So, yeah. So Randy Post, seven, year old, seven years old, was killed Thursday night when he apparently ran into the path of a car at Sandtown and Browns Road in Cobb County, which if you're wondering where that is, it's not near here. Um, that's closer to Marietta Square and a little okay. bit farther south, Okay. Um, if I have that correct. The Post lived at 242 Booth Road in Marietta. Um, the gentleman who was the driver was charged with involuntary manslaughter. And the story also goes is that he was the little boy had actually dropped a dime in the road and went back to go get it well he was crossing the road with his brother That's his right. older brother who was like nine and yeah while they were crossing the road he drops his dime and you know kids they stop real quick gotta grab the dime that was a lot of money. probably bends over the driver didn't see him and hits him yeah tragic so tragic um, so this family i mean really had a lot of tragedy you know unfortunately as many families do um, Would but you like to see a picture? I do. I want to see a picture. Let me turn this around so I can zoom in over here. Okay. We got a couple of pictures, actually. We do actually. have a couple. So I need to show more. All right. So here's Randy. And I'm thinking this is Randy with his dad, right? Yeah, probably. So if that's his dad, then that is Lloyd Sr. No, no, Don. Oh, Don. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Don, I mean, Rand- Randy's Golly. uncle would be Lloyd Jr. Yeah, Lloyd Sr. is the grandpa. Okay, yes. so that's Don. All right. Okay. On. Then we have... Sorry, guys. I didn't pull them all out at the same time. Not him. This is that one. Sorry, I should have made him bigger. All right, that's that's Lloyd. Um, that's the grandfather. The the grandfather holding the babies. Yeah. Some of the boys. We don't know which boys. Yeah. Lloyd Senior. Lloyd Senior. And then here is sorry, a little breeze coming through. Here mm-hmm. is the grandma. Here's Daisy Lou. Look at this. There's Daisy. That's a lady. You know who that is? That's a strong woman. It right sure there. is. Props to her. I wish mm-hmm. I had met her. She would have. Okay, here are here's William Rex, the one of the other brothers, but he died in 1988. Yeah. And then him with some of the other brothers, but mm-hmm. I don't know which ones probably. Yeah. And then, so uh, the here's Dion. So Dion, this is the one that dies of cancer at age like 25. 25. Yep. Yeah. And then here's Lloyd Jr. That one's a really tough one. Whoever posted this, this family member, thank yeah, you so much. Absolutely. These are wonderful to have. Um, yeah. We love, we love to be able to have a face to see. Yeah, definitely. Uh, makes the story so much more. It makes the person really, really real. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go over to um, what we think is the older section, the oldest okay. grave and section in this park. Okay. Plot. Be very careful of the angel. That sounds please. good. Make my way through all of this. We got a broken limb that's fallen down here. Coming there are some way. spots of field stones, yes. especially in this area. You got yeah. one here, you got another one. I bet there was one somewhere in this and area. And I tell you though. what, when we're walking around right uh, in here, right yeah, there. there's a whole lot of recesses in the I ground. So Here's there's definitely one. more graves over here. Yep. And then it's that one right there. Okay. 
Okay. Here so we we're go. actually towards the back of the cemetery. Uh -huh. um, farther away from the road. Yeah. So this one, I think, has sunk into the ground mm -hmm. a little bit, just based off of where the lettering is. So yeah. we have a bunch of these at the city cemetery, very similar style. This is um, Christopher G. Trout. Mm -hmm. And then you can see the words actually go all the way down. I'd have to clean it in order to be able to read all of it. Mm -hmm. But um, it's 1846. 1846. So even if it's wow. not from 1846, I definitely think it's a pre-war marker. I think that marker could be original. Totally original. Oh, yeah. I it, really it, do. It definitely really, I definitely it's think been here. so. And another interesting thing to note, though, is even though that's 1846, it was not listed in the first hundred years. Sarah didn't have it. So that Sarah I saw. Temple's book that we've been following to all of these cemeteries, um, she lists everybody that was there in you know 1930 or 31, early 30s, and he's not listed, which is very odd. I want, I don't, yeah, I don't know because it's it's very obvious to see it uh -huh. where it's located. There's a lot, of, like I said, field stones, but I think this is the. The farthest or the oldest one, so the field stones you see are probably pre war as well. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hazard a guess at that. Yeah, there's another one. And right then there. the cemetery does there. actually it doesn't go far back into the trees that we could see, but they could be field there could be field stones underneath. I mean, this property before it we continue with Christopher, yeah. This property if we go back here, this is kind of the line of the the headstones are all kind of I'm going fast on it, kind of all right here. But if you step over here, the fence line, I mean, is way back there. So there's a whole lot of wooded area that, you know, potentially they could have been using for graves, you know, sites. So I don't know. I, I have a feeling there probably are still some more under there. Because I really think um, if you don't know what a field stone looks like, it's very easy to just say, hey, that's oh, a sure. rock in the woods. Yeah. Very, very easy to say that. Because, like... This one right here, I think. Oh yeah, that that's a field stone, field stone with, a, with, with some sort of a bush that's been growing over it. Growing over it, yeah, definitely. Was there anything else about Christopher? We don't really know no. anything else about him. We just know his parents aren't buried here. So I'm wondering if maybe the Trout yeah. family might have had some property here, possibly, had, or had been the ones to maybe originally get this plot during the land lottery um, in the 1830s. True, highly possible, but. Um, Here's, this, a, here's this. another one that's in sad shape, but it's a great story. Sad shape here, but as well, you come actually, to the front, this is a continue of the trouts. Oh, it is me, because remember the. Oh yeah, that's right. So, so that's, this is um, uh, this could be the son. That's true. That I bet be it father. is the trout. Yeah, I bet this so, is the Christopher's son. This is P.G. Trout, born June seventh, uh, eighteen thirty-six. Died February twenty-second, eighteen sixty-seven. This is his wife Nanny, but it's Nanny Morris. She is 1839 to 1922, but this is her second husband, A.J. Morris. And if you look at the bottom here, we've got P.G. Trout, A.J. Morris, and Nanny's in the middle. Nanny's in the middle. Maybe, and I said brave woman. I mean, she decided to not only bury herself with both husbands, but put them all three on the same headstone. She's in the middle. <laughs> but what I appreciate is Nanny's like, I'm going to be on top. That's right. My name's first that's right like, yes that's right go they um if you look i mean yeah there's definitely some uh some sinkage action happening here yeah i <laughs> could use some help this one i don't know if that's a trout family or not um i couldn't read it um, it's an older one for sure son of ruby no it's uh it's an owen b Oh, okay. Owen oh, Beast. Okay. That's a name we yeah. know in Marietta. But again, there's a lot of names that you would know. Like there's some Duns, there's some Dobbs, there's Browns. There's like, there's names that have connections back to Marietta Square. There's a North sure. in here too, actually. What? How did yeah. we not see that? Uh, I'll show them to you later. I don't oh. know where it is off the top of my head. But, um, okay. Okay. But yeah, so... I mean, again, this we're in the broken. far back, and you can see the front, so it's not... Yeah, it's not huge. It's not huge. It's easy to walk. This one, somebody's trying to fix by just propping it up there, but... Oh, this... Okay, this is the... This is the... He's a Confederate veteran. Okay. His out. Okay, yeah. Uh, um, he didn't really have anything besides it, but... Yeah. So, I mean, you can walk this one very easily. Yeah. Um, if you want to come and see it, you need to park in the... Um, it's the cat clinic, animal clinic right next door, and you just walk over. Right. Um, very easy, front to back, 
flat. Oh, here comes some thunder. <gasps> Woo! It's a rainy day today. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Um, but easy to walk front to back, side to side. Um, I would just watch where you're stepping for um, recesses. Yeah, recesses. Branches and stuff aren't really an issue, but fill recesses. stones, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And and let's just put out one more call for anyone who may attend that church to um, maybe just set up a you know a local scout troop or some or another group to come out and just clear the brush on a on, maybe in the fall when it gets a little cooler. You know, clear yeah. out some of these branches that are um, you know that are hurting some of the the headstones. That are gonna they may not be damaged now but they will be at some point in the future i mean if if you are a member of it's sandy plains baptist church and you're watching this video or you know somebody who is you can feel free to reach out to me and mm -hmm. we can discuss maybe uh i haven't learned how to fix tombstones yet but we can definitely talk about cleaning very very easily because a yeah. lot of these stones just need a quick clean yeah um they really to be honest i think all of them we've been able to read uh, the majority of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but you know, it's it's not a huge plot. Well, I think a little more TLC than cutting grass. Is yeah, what yeah. We're, what we're um, going it's for. around. I think it's just over three hundred and something graves. Okay. So that um that were photographed on finder graves. So, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. But um I yeah if you're out here on Sandy Plains feel come on over and take a look and just walk through. Mm -hmm. Family members are definitely coming by because there are newer flowers. Right. And, okay. So if you're out here, you know it's a great little cemetery to come through and. Woo! And Even I just Jesus, realized Jesus they might get confused because we just swapped places. <laughs> uh, we had a moment in the camera, but that's okay. You guys won't know it because we have a great editor. Who... <laughs> and it's not us. That's why he's no. a great editor because it's not us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this is a great cemetery. Nice small one. Very, very sweet. Um, but the I was going to say there's nothing, there's no stone that I've seen outside of the clovers that's anything different there's no wood there's no zinkies no nope. there's no woodworker one there is one um we didn't go to it but it's up in the front yeah where it's kind of like a pointed mound um behind oh it. yeah that's right we forgot but to we, kind we, of investigate i'll that. take a picture of it yeah but um but yeah so otherwise it's um it's just a lovely little cemetery it is lovely so all we'll right see you guys next week at some location that's right oh i dropped my treasure hold on dropped her baseball i was gonna show it again and let's let's support oh we didn't talk about this, the sandy plains community we'll do <laughs> well i will say this okay so where we're at right almost near the intersection of piedmont and sandy plains as i said before there's like four cemeteries within this area um there's one on the other side of sprayberry there's the one in sprayberry crossing there's another one um that's on private property that we're going to try and get to so again the sandy plains community is or was chock full chock full of people yes. enough to have four cemeteries <laughs> a lot of cemeteries and it was right around this area so sprayberry what i was getting at with the baseball sprayberry high school baseball um is that that's really part of the center of this community so uh it you know it'd be nice well, to well not technically i mean now it is now but, it, well no, um, no now it is now it is, now it is. Yeah, yeah not originally but no. now it is and so um yeah so it's just something the cool to think about if, if you're a sprayberry alumna alumnus alumna like alumni alumni like my husband yes and um anyway so that's where we're at yep so, so. we'll see you next time all right bye, bye